Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me in another of my interview series. As you know, we've been exploring sovereignty and what that means, freedom from the system. Today, we're, we're looking at a slightly different way of freedom from the system by perhaps using the system to get what we want, things that the system perhaps didn't know could happen. But I'm very pleased to bring on Gavin today from Sovereign Empowerment, uh, who's going to tell us a little bit how he works, uh, the, the, his magic, let's put it like that. Gavin, welcome to the show. Thank you so Hi. much. Thank you so much for coming along. We've, we've Thank been you. exploring all of this. For the well, I've been exploring, and the, and the audience has been growing with me, and it's been absolutely fantastic. And we've seen I had uh, Sovereign Pete on yesterday, and he was explaining how he does things from, I suppose, outside of the the system, outside of the legal system. And I know that um, having watched a couple of your videos, and a big thanks to Darren from uh, from Funky Prepper, who made me aware of you watching um, an episode in which he was saying, you know, basically you're saying you here's a way if you don't have to pay the council tax um, and you go through that method. And I thought, oh, that's interesting because, you know, who wants to pay an unnecessary tax if you don't have to? Although you may want to contribute. I'm not saying people shouldn't contribute to, you know, the, the bins and things like that. But you may not want to contribute to the big fat salary that someone in the council has. That, that might, you know, disturb you. So, so tell us a little bit, um, first of all, just to get into things, um, how you what's your um, way of dealing with the sovereign empowerment and, and how did you start to sort of wake up to there was another way? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I guess I'll just give a little bit of an intro into how I got into this stuff in mm, the first yeah, place, I guess. Yeah. So um, kind of really, I've always been one of those individuals that kind of bucks authority. So I've always had that natural inclination to, when someone's telling me to do something, I'm always thinking, well, why are you telling me to do that and why should I? So that's yeah. always been a part of me. So Back in 08, obviously, we, we know we had the big uh, big crash. Um, and that was kind of my, I didn't know it then, but I know it now. That was my first sort of wake up call because it burnt me quite badly. And so I just thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to let that happen again. Let me find out about what this financial system is all about. And obviously, that was going down that rabbit hole. You, you, you start to learn the truth that it's privately owned and, and all the things that we know. So I guess I was semi awake coming up to 2020. When 2020 hit, obviously, like a lot of people, boom, I'm, you know, I'm wide awake to a lot of the different things, all these different rabbit holes. And, yes. you know, with that, just just a sort of, again, m me being anti-authority, I just thought, right, that's it. I am not contributing to anything to do with this system. Naively, I just stopped everything. And obviously, everyone jumped on top of me. <laughs> oh, uh, and that yeah. was kind of like, right, well, I better do something about this. And so I started looking into the law. And, and that was my introduction to sovereignty and everything that your guests, your great guests have, have talked about. And so... I think like a lot of people, that's you go down those rabbit holes. Um, and this is just my particular experience with doing that. I comprehend it well, and I, I am sovereign, and I live my life that way. But what I kind of realized was that, you you know, you can't use that with the system. It doesn't recognize it. Right. And the, the simple fact for me is that it's all well and good and great, and it's all true and everything else, but the system exists. The system is corrupt, and if you ignore it, it will run you over. Because it's and huge, it's like, it, a, it, yes, it's a massive it's, juggernaut that is yeah. difficult to fight when you're Very just difficult. a little man. Exactly. And so I kind of started thinking, well, and I, you know, I, I got a pre pretty beaten up in the early days of doing this stuff. And that was, you know, you, you've got to experience that to start thinking, right, you know, what do I do? How do I do this? And yeah. I just started looking at the system itself. Right? How does this system actually work? And for me personally, um, I started with council tax. And I didn't know what I was doing. And in the earlier days, I was just throwing everything I could at it. But once I started to understand procedure, procedure rules and how things should be done and everything else, it was very apparent that what the council were doing was not that. And so I started to look into well, where, where would the loopholes or the obvious things that I can start pressing come into play? And I, I started just focusing on the summons itself and the liability order. And I just wanted to pick that apart. And that's really kind of what we're doing now. And obviously, over time, I've been able to implement other things. You know, you've got um, the obligation argument that, that, that stands on the Bill of Rights, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different things you can bring into that argument now. But I like to keep it very simple. And my whole kind of ethos is, you know, the path of least resistance. What I found with sovereignty, as an example, is that, you know, it's like pushing water uphill, trying to get anywhere with that type of scenario. And even actually, to be honest with you, you know, standing on things like the Bill of Rights, 
is another thing for me where it's like pushing water uphill. I'd rather get a win. Yes. And, and I'm not looking for a win necessarily where I've got my big day in court, you know, and you've got your, your, your proud moment there. Because to be frank, that's a very difficult thing to do. The way I approach it now, and this is how I approach everything that claims and all of the stuff now, is I like to go after the individual. Because often it's the individual that's actually ignorant as to what it is they're doing themselves. Yes. And when you can outline the facts as to what should be happening that isn't happening and their personal liability in that situation, I've found that where we put that pressure on them, they can often stop. Right. So it's not that you're going to get this shiny certificate that you can mount on your wall saying, well done, you've beaten the council, whatever it's going to be. <laughs> but yeah. you know, how do we know that it's stopped? And I can just use my own example. I have not received a bill for a couple of years. They stopped and I've, they've gone quiet. Now, I'm not saying they one won't rock up and I've got to deal with it again. But from my point of view, that's happened. And that's really the objective we have with everyone that we, we help hands on. It's just putting pressure on the individual. So they just have that kind of moment where they consider their own actions. And I'm not saying that everyone in these councils are bad. I, don't, I refuse to believe that. Mm. I believe they have a conscience. And a lot of the time, it's just about education. And for what we're doing, that's proving to be working. So we'll continue doing the same thing. So I guess my ethos is really more about, you know, the system exists. The system, in my view, is absolutely corrupted. Um, I think we can all agree that the system itself was set up with that in mind. It wasn't set up for the people in the first place. And, you know, we can talk about the, the straw man and all these other good things. I mean, that for me is a simple fact. If that exists, how can we be saying that this whole system has some legitimacy and that yes. the rule of law still exists within that system. I question that logic because if the system's foundation is corrupt, why are we trying to bring back a rule of law within the very corrupt system that's trying to kill us? Let's be yes. honest about it. So that, so I, I look at it like the system provides tools that we can use to exploit the loopholes and therefore go after these individuals in their personal capacity whether that brings them to a stop because they realize what they're doing is wrong or whether we can bring a claim against them, whatever way it works. That for me is ultimately how we deal with it. Yeah. The sovereignty side of it for me is that I take the view that I'm already sovereign. So why do I need to write to anybody in this system to prove it? Very good. It yeah. validates the system. So I'm not, why waste your time doing all of that? I don't need some person to respond and say well done you're sovereign now you go go live your sovereign life it's yeah, like but still pay live, the chaos live, attacks yeah right. you know just live as a sovereign you know that, to, to keep it simple yeah so one of the things that uh, i noticed that you did in the one that uh, um uh, darren put up was you're talking about the council tax and we assume stupidly i suppose that and then you've already said it's a corrupt system, but we assume that because it's legislation and the government have made it, that the councils are duty bound to go through the rules correctly and that they ought to know it because they've been doing it for donkey's years. And that we, ignorant people that we are as householders and whatever, um, should just rely on them to be doing it properly because, in theory, why wouldn't they? But actually watching the video that you've done with Darren and, and on your site as well, which we'll list below, um, is the fact that they, they take these corrupt shortcuts, I suppose, like hiring a room in a court and the, the, the judge isn't over on oath and they're sort of rubber stamping people who are behind, as I understand it, and, and then just sending out the, the, the demands for money. And what should go on is that each and every case should be under oath and actually the people who are being, um, they ought to have the right to come to court to p make their case and, and that's not happening. And so by the way that they're acting, they're illegal in the first place. Is that, yeah, have, have I summed that up but pretty accurately? Yeah, I mean, if we look, you know, these are the magistrates court is what's classed as an administrative court. The county courts are administrative courts and you know, we don't want to get too far into that, but they are all no. provably unlawful in the way that they operate. And there's a lot of case precedent in history that that, that, that confirms that. And even House Bill of Parliament says the same th thing. So we're dealing with that illegitimacy that we, you know, we're going into that knowingly, right? Yes. So if we focus then on the count that the, the magistrates court, you've got a civil matter being heard in a magistrates court. And obviously there are court rules to confirm that can be done, but they're doing that because they can get away with the shortcutting of everything to do it. 
Um, they are in cahoots with the council. Um, if you've been to these hearings enough times, and you know we help quite a lot of people, I mean, it's you know how many coincidences before it's mathematically impossible that that is exactly what is going on. And the things that we've seen and they've done, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. So when you look at that, and, and just to simplify the whole thing, um, there is case law that confirms this too, that even just the issuance of a summons cannot be a purely administrative function, that a magistrate or an agent of the court must apply their mind to the matter at hand to determine whether a summons should be issued. Now, by impossibility, that cannot happen with the council tax because they bulk list everything. Right. So there is no way that there's a magistrate in those courts every week going through thousands of these complaints determining whether a summons should be issued. And the proof of that is the fact that everybody in those complaint lists gets a summons. Yes. The other problem is the council are issuing the summons. Which and, they're not supposed to do. Well, they're not supposed to, and there's a lot of case law again to confirm how these summonses should be issued, but they have tweaked the legislation to basically confirm that they can do that. But the weak link in all of that, and I've we've done this with the MOJ now, the Ministry of Justice, is that there is no authority that exists. Of the authority to confirm that the judiciary can give a council the powers of a judiciary does not exist. Right. Yet they're doing it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now the simple fact is that they're doing that. They are in breach of an older piece of legislation called the Local Government Act, eighteen eighty eight, and it's section seventy eight. Now I'm just summing this up simply but yeah no, the do. council or any employee of the council cannot impersonate the judiciary that's exactly what's going on they cannot not impersonate act as the judiciary so when you get that piece of paper that says summons and it's actually not on court paper or come Correct. from the court it's come from your local council it isn't an actual real genuine summons correct so that's the point to start challenging not the council not the fiction the yeah. individual that is standing behind that. So anybody that's done any type of noticing or letters to the council know that eventually you're going to get that head of council tax kind of putting the name to it and coming back saying, you know, basically cut and paste local government finance act, you've got no choice, you know. So the way I've got past or we get past that is we start challenging these facts, you know, and you can then use the physical evidence that you have served me what you're calling a summons. I've got some questions about said summons. And then you're putting that individual in a yes. corner because they need to answer the questions now but the other part of that is you're, you've got evidence that you've asked the questions so if they continue as they often like to do so that the actual hearing they're now committing offenses right yes because it's it's that am i right in thinking it's that business about the court itself is a corp sorry the council is a corporation which is Correct. a legal fiction Correct. so it works on paper but you need yeah. They can't do anything on their own because it's just a building and, a, and an idea more than anything else. So you need s people, real people, to actually do the stuff. And so you targeting that person who's, who's an employee, but he is a real person. And, and they're liable. And then they, become, and, and they may not know that. Exactly. And so then that must put the wind up them when you're starting to sort of go, well, we'll take you to court, that's fine. But to, if it goes the wrong way, mate, you're yeah. the one that's paying the court fees and, and all the other things. And that's it. So when you, when you, you know, you notice them or you do it however you do it, you're, you know, I like to start off with the facts in a, in a nice way. I don't kind of yes. go in aggressively and say, you crooks, and this is what you're doing. I just mm. put it as, look, I've, I've got some questions. I'm slightly confused. I'm in receipt of this summons. This is my understanding of how a summons ought to be served. And then I ask the questions, knowing that I've got the case law and everything to come back with. So you, if you know the truth, you can set them up to, to bring them in and, and trap them because they love to keep making claims they can't really substantiate. Right. And the only thing they can ever really hide behind is the Local Government Finance Act. So by default, that's where they go. And then you can bring them in further. So as an example, I mean, if they carry on with the hearing, I mean, that individual now, especially if they're the head of council tax, is meant to be at the hearing. So could they be liable for perjury? And now I know they're a fake court and everything else, but you know, the offences are real. Yes. So you just want to outline the facts and, and, and have them understanding that initially they might think, oh, this is some guy just getting some stuff off the internet and sending it through. When they carry on, we then have case law as pertains to the liability order itself. Now, we know that the actual legal form was discontinued in 2003. 
There is no ability for a court to issue a liability order. Yet there is case law that exists that confirms that a physical copy of that order has to be evidenced or right. some way of proving that there is an order. So when you know these facts, you can start, as you can imagine, you can start asking simple questions yes. that they can't really answer. And, and you're empowered further... by that because you know the facts beforehand. It's not like you're just willy nilly asking you. You're I mean, it's kind of like a game of chess, really, except that you you have all the pieces on your side. Well, that's really it. You just lead them in. So, you know, I, I don't have the data and the facts because we never really right. track this stuff. But the, the summons part has been very successful in preventing the hearings going forward. And so let's just kind of look at that. Have yeah. you had an absolute win and stop the council? No. But if they can't get a liability order against you, there's no way of enforcing anything. And just explain so, for people who don't know what a liability order is, if you wouldn't mind. Well, it's, it's meant to be that, you know, you've, you've been summoned legitimate, le legitimately. They've taken, you've gone to court. They've heard the matter as pertains to the claim. They've looked through all of the facts and they can establish that there is a debt owed and that we are liable. And therefore, they then issue the liability order. Right. But that none of that's happening. And in fact, even in the complaint, we've got, I, I, I even go through, by the way, guys, I can provide this to you, Richard, if, in a downloadable document, but we even point out what the actual complaint should include for the summons to be considered by a magistrate. And the fact is, when you, if you push the council, they'll provide you that complaint and they just redact all of the names and give your name. And it's just your name, address and the amount. Well, I that see. doesn't confirm anything no it certainly doesn't provide the evidence necessary to determine that there's a summons required because there's a real debt here yeah the other you... thing that they sorry richard go on. no i was just going to say well you know who you are you know you know who you are you you need the the rest of the evidence exactly i mean if, if you, you can't bring a claim and just say yeah, richard is liable for ten thousand. there you go and Thanks then the magistrate goes, oh, yeah, right, well, there's the summons, we'll go, you know, let's get the hearing. It, you know, it's, it's, just, it's an absolute joke, yes. but it's going on every day. Um, the other thing is, is that the MOJ, have, um, they issued, uh, not, not recently, but they've issued um, confirmation as to how pre-action protocol for debt claims ought to be conducted. And local authorities are not exempt from that. And when they like to cite the Local Government Act, and the associated regulations when you go into the regulations they confirm that those liable are classed as debtors the word debtor is used a lot yes. well you can't use that word and then ignore pre-action protocol for debt claims you can't have it both ways and there's nothing in the local government finance act that says that they're exempt from following pre-action protocol for debt claims so there's another way you can push them. Now, obviously, in that, pre-extra protocol for debt claims means there has to be some form of agreement. We know that legislation is not law. We know that legislation requires our compliance, yes. our consent. These are the things that they don't like to admit, and they're the things they say, well, there's no contracts required. But again, you can't have it both ways. No, exactly. You know, if, if, if there are protocols and rules in the system that determine that there has to be X, Y, Z evidenced, and you're not doing it, then you're clearly breaching something somewhere. So it's just knowing those things and putting them on the lap of the individual that is saying, hey, you're liable, pay up. Yes. And they say, well, explain this then. And now, and th 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 I mean, an ordinary person coming along thinking, blimey, you know, I, I feel now empowered to do all of this. It's not, it, it, I mean, it's, it's not an easy task unless you've done it before, presumably, or you've got the help of somebody else like yourself. Um, and I'm guessing you, you, you're not saying, you know, do this yourself it, and... You know, you might not be recommend, recommending your own help, of course, because you know other other places are available, sort of thing. Absolutely. But would you say that it's it's not something, it, it, unless you're very quite well versed in all these acts and uh, rules that have been made, it's it's a bit foolhardy because they've they can baff you know bullshit baffles brains at the end of the day isn't it they can yeah. the full force of them and they can scare you with their big black print and their big you know it's a summons and you go oh my god hang on what have i got myself into and and presumably some people do try and then they bottle it because it seems too much yeah i mean on the so there's a few things to un unpick there so just in terms of how we work with people you know people mm. watch the videos and they book a call and we have a bit of a chit chat and, and there's kind of two ways we we take it and again and it depends on the individual. Some people are literally, I've just realized what's going on. Like, what, what do I do? Where do I start? Um, and some of those want hands on help. Others are just, you know, point me in the right direction. What do I need to read and, and, and et cetera. So 
when we help people like that, it's more a case of us saying, right, well, you know, read these books, start reading this legislation. And the way we do that is we just we have calls as and when they need it, where they go, right, I know this now. I've just done that. What do you think about this? And one of the things I sort of say to people is that it's certainly in the first year of, you know, um, honorably not paying the council tax. We're not willfully not paying. We're honorably not paying. That's a big difference. Mm. Um, you've got a runway of a year, really, to learn what you need to learn. Because let's look at the, the scenario here. If you're doing things that aren't working or they're ignoring you, all they're going to do is get to the summons, get to the liability order, and then get the enforcement agents instructed. And their whole gambit at that point is they can wash their hands of you, and then they're working on the assumption that the enforcement agents do what they need to do. You get scared sufficiently and pay up. Job's yes. done. Um, but the thing is, if you know that the enforcement agents have no power, then that threat doesn't really matter, which means you've got really a year worth of trial and error and doing things, learning and, and trying things out. It, it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen to you. You know, you're not going to prison or any of those things that they, they talk about. So where people have got that kind of confidence to just give it a go, that's what we like to support. Because I think that's the better way to do it. You yes. know, it's, it's really empowering when you do these things. I had a, had a lady uh, recently, I actually just spoke to her again this morning. Um, she'd just recently woken up and um, we, we started with the, the, the paper, uh, just to kind of prove a point, so just to show that these things can work. Let's get the hearing adjourned. So she actually went down to the court herself and she started, you know, I do that to say, you, you need to see it and experience it to realize exactly what's really going on. And she went yes. down there, they pointed her back to the council because obviously there's nothing listed in the courts. They went to the council and they said, well, we've never ever had anybody make this inquiry before. Oh, really? um, long, yeah, and, and this was all really empowering for her because she knew that she was on the right path. And long story short, they adjourned the hearing. Uh, side note on that, you tell me where a claimant as the power and authority to adjourn a hearing when they're making the claim against you. Like yeah. that in itself is is so wrong, but that's what's going on. But that empowered her. So she's continuing on her journey. So she's got the confidence. The other side of that is where maybe they don't necessarily have the confidence or they need a little bit more support. We can we kind of call it doing it with you. Yes. So we're not taking on cases per se, like a solicitor would. We're doing it with them, but we can get sort of one on one. So that might be that we're drafting notices and rebuttals or whatever it may be. We'll be setting the strategy based on what it is they, the council is and isn't doing. But we can use their case and what we're doing as a way to fast track the learning. So it's then not a case of, right, go and read that big book. Yes. You know, come back with credit or read this legislation that yes. doesn't make I, any sense. I did buy one of the books oh, right. that you yeah. recommend. <laughs> and, uh, it's I'm a not read, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not very, where's the thing? I'm not very far th through at the moment. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, but it, it does empower you. I mean, if you can understand the blooming terminology, that's, that's half the thing. But you, but if you've got somebody like yourself that you can say, look, I've got this, I don't really understand this part of this law or whatever, then it, then it's very helpful. And that, that's why we do it. I mean, we, we didn't set out with the intention to do that, but it was just the case of more and more people saying, look, can you just help us? We just thought, mm. well, let, let's see how that would work and do it. And to be honest, we're doing a lot of that now, yeah. um, which is great because I just take the simple view that, you know, forget all of the, 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 the legislation and the loopholes. The more that just simply stand and honorably say, you know, no more, the sooner this whole thing ends anyway. Exa yes, no, absolutely. And, and so it is a numbers thing that the more absolutely people are right. getting on top of it and saying that this is a nonsense. And, and, and of course, more and more people, I think, are beginning to think, hang on, the government and the councils, what with the 15 minute cities and things that are doing stuff that we've not asked for. So why are we paying for it? Exactly. Um, yeah. Because if the councillors were doing their job properly and holding much more notified meetings so that people could come in and have their say and say well do you want this you know it's an idea and people go no not bloody lightly thanks very much they say, okay we won't do it then if that was happening you'd think okay there's some value into paying this tax but if they're just pushing stuff down your throat he's like well actually not only do i not want to have this but i don't want to pay for it either exactly that you know, so, uh, and we, so, I think we're all aware of the real agenda that's going on. So, yes. you know, we, we understand what's really at play. So for me, it's just a case of I always say to people, look, it's not necessarily that you're in this for the win. And if you're certainly doing it because you just, you know, it's, it's got it too expensive. I always say don't start because right. you, you will give up. You won't see this through. You know, if you're going to make a stand for, for, for truth and, and sovereignty and, and what is right, then um, you've got to be prepared to sort of 
take the black eyes and the thick lips along the way. And, and often you have to have a, a very big why as to why you're making the stand. Yes. Um, and it's not then just about council tax. It, it starts to dovetail into everything that this system is up to uh, yes. and, and trying to do to us, you know. You mentioned the, um, the the thugs that come round to try and get the money from you, the um, enforcement agencies, and you said that they don't actually have any power. Now, I suppose a lot of people will think, "Hang on a minute," but they, you know, you see the images or you read the story about someone taking their car away or they coming in and breaking into the house to take stuff. Now, I know I had some time ago when my kids were small; they're in their thirties now, but um, we had CCJs against us, counter court judgments. And um, we did have bailiffs uh, coming. I, and on one occasion, we didn't have any money at all. I was in the entertainment industry, you know, I didn't have any money. And, and my wife, who was at home at the time, said, we did see this bloke. And he peered through the window. He saw there was absolutely nothing to take. And he didn't bother to knock on the door. And I said, oh, I know I was away at the time. But uh, we had that threat. But you get the feeling because of the threats and menaces and the all that paperwork that comes through that they somehow, for some reason, and you don't quite understand it because it's fear, that they do have the ability so to take your stuff. Um, so when you say they don't have any power, could you just explain how that works? Yeah, it's actually quite simple. Um, and I, this is specific to council tax, so I can bring this into other situations where right, these okay. goons might get involved. But if we look at council tax specifically, we know that they can't evidence a physical liability order. So the simple fact is this, if we have, you know, the council is a corporation, right? They're instructing another corporation, a company, a limited company often, um, to go and enforce this alleged debt. But this just simply comes down to assignment of the debt or a contract. So in simple terms, if there's a contract, it has to express third party contract rights, i.e. there has to be a contract between us and the council and those enforcement agents are written into the contract, which means that they then have a right to enforce that debt. Right. That doesn't exist. Oh, the other way right. it can happen then is with assignment of the debt. Okay. But there has to be a paper trail of that assignment. There has to be what's called a notice of assignment, which clearly isn't happening. And there has to be, and that has to be proved to be served. And there has to be, um, we have a right to see a deed of assignment. Okay. Now these are actually the things we use with debt collectors for credit card debts and those kind of things, but it's still applicable to these guys. So what is it they're saying? So they ignore that stuff and they say, well, no, 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 no. You know, um, local government finance act, blah, blah, blah. There's a liability order. Okay, well, where is it then? Yeah. Well, we, we don't have that, you know, but that, that's not the point. You know, so you, you can call them out very easily. And what they tend to then do is they escalate the fear tactics. So, you know, we can get a warrant of control to take your goods. And they'll cite, um, I think it was Schedule 12 of the um, Tribunal Court and Tribunals Act. Um, and what, what they're basically doing is they're citing the correct regulation uh, legislation sorry, as pertains to the service of one of those warrants. But what they like to or conveniently miss out is how a warrant like that is obtained. And what they generally say is that, and they actually say the Traffic Enforcement Centre, I've seen this coming up so many times when they're challenged. What the hell has a Traffic Enforcement Centre got to do with issuing a bloody warrant of control of goods? There's a question. But they say that they've done that and they gave authority to the council to provide the warrant. And then they provide you this warrant, which is a document, big red writing all over it. It's just completely fake. <laughs> and when you challenge them on that and say that, you know, thank you for the evidence of your um, your offence, fraud by misrepresentation, <laughs> you know, yeah. you can easily call this stuff out. So yes. the simple fact is because there is no order that can be evidenced, because there's no assignment of the debt, there's no contract, there is no warrant, they have no power. Right. So the simplest way then to deal with them, and then I think Pete, Sovereign Pete mentioned something like this about contract. You know, this, this system of commerce is all about contract. So the first thing they will ask you, as the police do as well, is what is your name? Are you X, Y, Z? Yeah. Don't answer. There's no obligation to provide any answer to that. So if you don't confirm that, they don't know who you are, where do they, how can they do anything? Yeah, how can they do anything? Um, so that's what I, you know people say oh, i want to go fight them i want to bring claims it's like you waste just stop just save your energy put yes. it into something else worthwhile fighting okay you might have to put up with a few knocks on the door here and there but eventually they're going to give up and essentially they give up because they're paid upon their ability to extract or extort cash from people if they know they're not being paid by you 
they obviously know they're not, you know, they're, they're a bit dim, these people, but they're not that stupid to know they're not getting paid, so there's no point <laughs> keep knocking on the door. No, absolutely. At the end of the day, it is a business. I so, had a... No, go on. No, please, carry on. Well, I was going to... I was going to talk... I just wanted to highlight something that happened to me with um, a, a parking ticket, because obviously people get one of these private parking ticket firms who yeah. chased me for <clears> about... Something like 10 years, this thing just kept going on and on and on. And, and, and the debt collecting company, because I knew I was in the right, because they'd put a ticket that said um, it was two minutes between me parking and then the ticket issued. And I just thought, that's just unreasonable. H how can I go and get a permit or a ticket to put on the car within two minutes? And so I knew that th it was invalid all the way through. So I didn't pay it. And... I had these debt, con debt collectors eventually coming in and saying, you know, you owe us this, all this. And then it would change and then it would be another debt collector came in and, you know, the, the, still with the big black letters and still. And then it would then eventually it went to court and it was a long old thing. As I say, it took about like 10 years, this thing. And um, and I knew that I wanted to have the day in court because I just thought I really don't have a thing to answer because it's two minutes. If it had been longer, I, I may have been a bit more nervous, but I was fairly confident and the thing I wanted to mention was that when I turned up at the court, one of the debt collector agencies had somebody to speak on their behalf. They took me aside and said, you're not going to win, so do you want to settle out of court? And if you do, it'll be 200 quid, you know, because you'll probably spend three or 400 quid, that's what it will be, and you'll plus the court charges and all of And even at the last minute, they were putting on the threat, and I said, no, I've come this far after 10 years, I'm going to have my day in court, thanks very much. <laughs> and as it happened, the uh, magistrate said, no, this is, uh, this is unreasonable, two minutes to go and put, no, it's no, no, no. And so, you know, it was great to see this person who tried to extract money from me, their face drop as they lost the case. And had to cough up after ten years, so that was a that was a nice win um, all the way through. But it's interesting how right to the end they're you know they're desperate for their money. They, they right. will definitely do that. Um, thing just I don't know if your audience knows or even yourself, Richard, but PCNs just a very simple way to deal with them. If they're council issued PCNs, they're illegal. Um, they they breach the Bill of Rights. There's a section of the Bill of Rights that simply states that all grants and fines of forfeitures before conviction are illegal and void. Wow. That one section voids council PCNs. When they're private, like you, like you had, what, what they generally do is they, they go on to contract. So what I like to do is start off with the Bill of Rights for them to say, oh, no, that's not relevant. It's a contract matter. Oh, thank you very much. So what you then do is you cite the five certainties of contract of which we can literally give case law for every single point. They come back and say, well, these terms and conditions up here are enough proof of a contract, but you cannot meet the five certainties of contract just by saying there's a terms and conditions sign and you should have read it. Yes. So when you challenge like that, they're actually quite straightforward to just get them dismissed because they don't want the hassle. When you've done that, of then taking you to court Yes. It's like, you know, this is probably a £60 thing. It's going to cost us way more to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And actually on that point, just another little tip, guys. We are in a system of commerce. So if you decide to kind of use the tools the system present to fight it with these different things, um, understand that it's it costs them to come after you. So one tactic, actually, is just make it make them make it cost more. Yeah. <laughs> So it Simply becomes put, not, you know, it's not in their it's, interest. It's commercially in unviable to keep chasing you. So that, you know, you can you can win in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be your big day in court, I guess is no, what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes. No, I mean, I didn't particularly initially want to go to court, but then, it, then they had something called a mediation they wanted to do with me. Yeah. And I thought, well, what is there to mediate? You know, it's like two minutes and uh, I, I still don't see that you're going to convince me otherwise. And then in the end, the court said, no, there's no point to the mediation. We'll just have a day. And I said, I'm happy. I'm happy. I want it now. You know, I wasn't I wasn't looking to do that. It was just um, one of those things. When you said with the with the council tax and you said, you know, you've got a year. I, I, the other th question I wanted to ask is very often some people will probably think, oh, I've missed a payment um, and, I, and I do want to fight this. If I make a mistake, are they going to come down on me like a ton of bricks tomorrow? Because we always think by the say the way that I say we always think, but it's probably just me. You feel like they're they're just waiting at the corner 
so that, you know, the, the, with threats and menaces that you've made this mistake and suddenly, right, OK, we're going to take everything else if you don't pay right this second, which, again, is part of the fear factor. It is, and I think and that's a really good point. Um, and kind of bringing it back to the, the point I was saying earlier on, like, you're already sovereign, we're already sovereign. So one of the things of, of, of really comprehending who we are is understanding that why, why, why should we care what they do or don't do? Why, why should we pay any attention to them saying, you know, you can only do these three things or you've got X amount of time to do this or you've got to do that. And but like, who cares? Right. Mm. So what, what is it they can actually do? They can still only do the same things that they do to everyone else anyway, which is get a summons, get the hearing, get the liability order, get the enforcement agents involved. Right. So if they're your three points, that's all they can do anyway. Yes. And then we do have actually people saying, oh, well, you know, what about the prison thing? You know, like you can go to prison. I know people have done that. Again, it's just fear tactics. People that go to prison are basically voluntarily putting themselves there for these oh. things. The regulation, I can give you some stories on this. Like the regulation, again, it's not legislation. It's one below. It's regulation. States willful refusal. Right. We're not willfully refusing anything. We're honorably asking some questions before we commit to paying. Yes. And it's the questions we're asking that cause the problems because we know they're right. We know what the answers are. Um, the other th part of that is that, you know, how, and I've, I can actually say this, this happened. I'll give you a real story. Um, dealing with a guy. Now, he'd been doing this for years. So the council really knew who he were. They really wanted to get him. Oh, and, right. um, you know, they, they issued this warrant for his arrest. You will never get a police officer standing on that warrant, knocking on your door for your arrest because it's illegitimate. That's, that's the truth. So who does the arrest? the enforcement agents and they generally come in plain clothes they look very official but they're enforcement agents they're making a citizen's arrest like everyone else can do mm. and this is why i mean by voluntarily just giving yourself up i would see yes so we i actually had this where they knocked on the door and the guy phoned me while it was actually happening and i just fortunately just picked it up and um long story short he called the police to ask if the warrant was uh, legitimate and obviously they said we don't have any warrants here like you know don't know what you're talking about <laughs> As soon as obviously it's on loudspeaker, the, yeah. the, the the bailiffs, the enforcement agents, made their excuse and left. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> so it's, it's it's a case of just knowing what's really going on, and then just standing your ground, standing in your own sovereignty, and understanding there's a line between you living in the private and sovereign, and then you crossing over into their system. Yes. Yeah. You know, you does that make sense? Yeah. No, absolutely. And that you said an interesting point um, then, which I learned from having to go to the, when I was with the, the kids and they were very small and, and they were threatening county court judgments at the time. And I remember going into the court, into the council to say, please don't do this. And they said, well, I'm sorry, we're going to do it. And so I got down on my bended knees and begged them in front of everybody else. You know, I, I was an actor, so it was fine. <laughs> and the kids were with me saying, please, please don't do this. We'll be destitute, blah, blah, blah. And, they, and you know, put them in, in, in an embarrassing situation. And they, but they said, well, you know, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. And he's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, but the thing that I learned was, as long as you say, I'm, I'm willing to pay, but I, you know, can't, but as you just so rightly said, but I've got questions, you, you're, you're not, you're being honourable, aren't you? Because you're Absolutely. saying, okay, I, I'll, I'll pay this, but can you just answer these questions? Because I think it's, you know, fair that you do. Rather than, as you just say, close the door, go, I'm not willing it's, I don't have anything to do with this because if you don't offer to pay or you or push back, then th that whole thing of, of being honourable in in law and in sovereignty is 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 working against you. Is that yeah, right? and yeah, exactly. And that, that's where they do really run you over because you've done nothing to rebut anything that they're doing. Yeah. And this is my point where I, we started this this video. It's is that you know the sovereignty stuff is all well and good. But you cannot ignore the system. Yes. And and those that do generally get into a lot of trouble. And, and we, we, we help a few of those people where they've maybe been listening to other groups out there and, um, you know, they, they get into a bit of bother. And then we sort of step in to try and help unpick everything using the system to do it. Yeah. No, that that and that makes perfect sense. So people should give it. Well, I mean, they may want to fight it or they may want to push back. But if at least they're saying, look, we're, we're willing we're willing yeah. to engage with you, but just, yeah. you, you know, before we like, like with anything, we just like some proof because exactly. You, yeah. And, and that's, exactly. and they can't argue against that surely. And say, well, we just like some proof because it's so, it's so sensible. 
for one thing. It's like you know, it's, it's well, you'd, you'd you'd like to think. Well, that, you'd like again, to think what they. Yeah, there's so many different things they come up with as to why they won't reply and all these different things. And I mean, it's it's actually on the, on that point. One of the things that we we say to a lot of folks now is just do nothing in certain situations. Again, I'm not saying every situation, no. and I'm not saying specifically council tax, but you know, there's a lot of things going on that people are dealing with and. You know, there was a time when we do the RTS thing, return to sender and all of these different things. But the reality now is that, you know, how do I put this about? I know we're on YouTube as well. So, you know, people mm. have had the spears, as it were, in, in the arms. And, yes. you know, there, there are unfortunately uh, rapidly rising excess deaths, etc. And a lot of the people in the public sector in these companies have had the spears and they're unfortunately passing. And mm. these companies are hemorrhaging staff left, right and centre, because don't forget, there are staff in these companies that are aware of things as well. So where you've got this rising tidal wave of people standing saying no more, and you've got the other side of that where there's the people in the system sort of overseeing what's going on, there's actually very, very high probability now that just being quiet means you just disappear under the radar because a lot of these letters are automated, right? Mm. And it's often the people that are RTSing and doing different things that are almost like the red rag to the ball. Well, I'm still here. Come and get me. Whereas if you don't reply, there's no one putting, no one's no bum on a seat looking into your matter because it costs them money to do so. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. actually, we're in a position right now where, and I've done this actually with my, I like to play and test things out in different ways. And I've, I've just done this with um, a utility provider where, I previously just agreed a £10 a month payment on contract law sort of basis. And um, they've switched me to a different company. I've just literally ignored them. And I've done that for the last 18 months. And oh, right. nothing's happened. And nothing's happened. And then you hear all these other different horror stories. Yes. And I know that's happened simply because they don't know whether I'm here or not. Yes. And I suppose when you switch and, some, and then you start to do something, you've agreed You've, exactly. you've acquiesced and you've, yeah. you know, and and so the jurisdiction is they've got you. Whereas if you don't agree to, because you didn't agree to have another company deal with it. Exactly. It comes down yeah. to contract again. If I need to fight it, I can. But the, the point I'm making is that we're at a point where I think that you should consider whether you even want to do the fight because that takes energy. Yes. You know, and that's going to take time, whether you're learning what you've got to do. When actually, if you just think, I don't do anything, let's see what happens. Right. And you yeah. might you know, you could get away with that for months and months and months. And why not? Well, exactly. So can I ask you a question then um, to, to round off this? Because we've got these things with what people are sort of nervous about now with the 15 minute cities and the 20 minute low traffic and all of this and the biometrics and being fined and infringements that will be coming in. Presumably, this is a similar sort of system, really. It's the same laws that are in action that you've been captured driving your car 101 times from one end of the city to the other end of the city or wherever it is and and the only way they can really convince you not to do this in the future to save the planet or whatever it is is to fine you so it still comes back does it not to the same principle that actually if you if you don't engage with it or you you work out the system that works for you eventually they just will have to give up issuing fines if nobody's... Pa I mean, I, they did one in Birmingham, didn't they, if I remember rightly. They had to write off something like £70,000. It, it failed, yeah. Big because no, failed. people just didn't bother to pay it. And you think, yeah. well, that's the way forward, surely. Well, that, that's what I mean. I mean, the, the simplest remedy for all of us now is just mass non-compliance. Yes. You know, like they can't do it. We, I, I think we, we are very close to the end game. You know, and there's obviously there's there's two camps, I would guess, you know, it's all going to be bad and it's just terrible. and We've got no hope. And there's the other side that, you know, that there's good things coming, you know, and, and I, I stand on the side that there's good things coming because we can prove it. I mean, there's so many things now we can point to to show that that's happening. Yeah. So I, I, just, I just think it's more about, you know, mass non-compliance. The other thing, and I know a lot of your guests have talked about this very eloquently, is, is constitution. You know, I think there's got to be, uh, you know, there's lots of different opinions as to what is the Constitution. Are we standing on the Bill of Rights? Is it the Magna Carta? All these different types of conversations. I think that it's got to be simplified in so much as that I think everybody, if they comprehend trial by jury and what that type of legal law, law system, if you like, means for us, that we can repeal legislation, the people can do that. Bringing that back, I think, is, is the thing that we need to do. Yeah. Now... There are different opinions on constitution, but I think that 
the masses need to be having the conversation. A lot of people I ask about constitution don't even know that we've got anything like that, don't even really comprehend the meaning of the word. And I think that's really where we want to be focusing. So even though, you know, I'm saying use the system and everything else, I don't think that's, well, that isn't going to be the way we win anything. That's just the way to just kind of firefight. stand in your power and, and firefight the day to days. But the, yeah. the real thing for me is, well, where is the constitution? How at some point when the the, the, the the SHIT hits the fan, what are we actually standing on? Yes. And and, and I, I for me personally, use the Bill of Rights, comprehend all of that, you know, everything's great, but that cannot be constitutional. It's a statute. It was who gave anyone authority to do that? Yeah, you know, exactly. Part well, exactly. of the very system that is is against us. So I just kinda I think we've got to come to a point now where we need mass non compliance and we need a conversation about constitution. Yes. What is it? Where is it? What are we actually standing on? And then how do we do move forward together? Yeah. And 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 I think you're right with the trial by jury. I mean, uh, you, you know, we we have jury trials, which is um, not the same thing by a, any a means. A complete joke. Yeah. And um <laughs> and you're and you're absolutely right because if you've got the the people who can try those rules for us and say actually this rule is really just about making money for a government um, and it's not really helping anybody. You know, you're two minutes late from parking and it's just not, It's or, or you've driven accidentally into a, on a yellow line. No harm's been done whatsoever. It's a stupid rule. You've been captured by a camera and you've, got, you've just got to pay 65 quid for just, or just hitting the curb. So, okay, you might be done for driving dangerously and if you were driving dangerously, but, you know, at least the tr the the jury can look at the evidence and say, yeah, no, you were driving dangerously, so that, you know you should pay the fine, or you weren't driving dangerously, or actually that rule is just so stupid, I, I, let's, not get rid let's not have it at all. That's exactly how it should be. The, the people, you know, power to the people and the people deciding what is best, not these no. unelected uh, yeah. bureaucrats we have in um, government. And I think the, the, the fact that we are having all these these things that we've not asked for, the 15 minutes, this is the, the, the digital, yeah. digital, all of those things, because they're coming in, it's waking people up to say, hang on a minute, when do we get a say? And actually, mm -hmm. why should you have the say in the first place? Correct. So I, I, I think you're right that we're coming to a tipping point fairly soon where the old system is going to have to change because otherwise <laughs> nothing's going to get done and there'll be such um, mass non-compliance that it'll happen, you know, we'll just take back the power. To me, that's an inevitability because I think we can, we're going through a seismic shift in humanity globally. This isn't like a UK thing. It's well, exactly. Yeah. Global no global seismic shift. And the question is, is who's going to come out on the other side of that globe and global shift. And, and for me, there's just too many people waking up. The things yeah. are just becoming too obvious and we outnumber them ridiculously. So yes. regardless of everything else, you just know that there's going to be an end point where we're going to get our say. And I don't know whether that's next month, this year, whenever, but it's mm. going to happen. You know, I, I do think it kind of coincides with the financial collapse and um, the, the flood of truth about what we've just been through the last three years and the agenda that's really at play. Yes. I, you can imagine if you've been, you know, coerced into that stuff, there's going to be an extreme level of rage and that will be a tidal wave. Yeah. And at that, I mean, imagine that you'd, you'd be going out of your head with rage and that that can bring down society and law and order. You see, Tim, I was I was talking to that point. I, I absolutely agree. And I was chatting to a, a friend of mine on the phone about an hour or so ago. And I was saying, do you know what? All these things that they're pushing in now and, and what with the, the covid thing is that the biggest mistake they've made is trying to sort of shove it all down our throats, because if they'd laid that out over the next 20 and 30 years, we would have all been quite happy and gone. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Just, you know, but because it's so now people are going, hang on a second. And, it's been and so think, aggressive, hasn't it? And, it and has. ridiculously stupid the it's, way they've done it. Yeah, and uh, they've probably got a reason to be doing it all now, but uh, it's been the biggest mistake. And, and of course, that's a bonus for us. To, and it's waking people up and thinking, actually, do we want any of that system at all? And the alternatives that you've mentioned, the trial by jury and, and all of those things, which then puts us back into honour and makes us, the people, just get on and just have li have life again and yeah, not be live, you know <laughs> live free i mean it's what we, yeah. it's, it's such a simple word freedom and it's the connotations of that for us are massive and that's exactly yeah. what we're all aiming for aren't we so yeah. 
and it, and it's it's all it's all going to happen. Gavin, it's been an absolute joy to to talk to you. Thank you for explaining Thank how you. you operate at the moment and with that wonderful view for the future. Because I think people do need to feel that, that that we're not constantly just going to be fighting fires and it's all hard graft, but that there is something down the line. And I, and I agree with you totally there. How do people find out uh, about what you do and can learn a bit more about you? No doubt you'll be snowed under with stuff anyway, but <laughs> people always they always say, oh, what, we want to t- you know, get in touch and all of that. So um, the website is sovereignempowerment.net and on that website you'll find all of the relevant links, uh, including to the YouTube channel. Um, and from there you can find links to book calls with us and, and everything else you might want to do in the meantime. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. I'll put the link in the description anyway. But Appreciate it's um, Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, um, Richard. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I hope the viewers got something out of this. I'm sure they have because so there's so many different theories on this. It's just nice, you know, I get criticised. Oh, what they're saying is all rubbish. And I say, well, that might be rubbish. It might be, might not be. Have a look at this one. Everyone's got a different view and a different way of working. I mean, and that's u- it. Ultimately, we do, we all would rather be free than enslaved. That's you know. I, th- that's I the think the line. main thing for me is it, it, the fact that you're standing. That's it. And it doesn't matter if you're trying this, that, or the other. The fact that we're standing, we're doing that on mass is causing problems, and that's what we've just got to keep up for now. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Gavin, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will be back again with more interviews on all sorts of different subjects. So uh, from Gavin and I, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.